Hi, this is Kevin from Let Me Tech You. In this video, we're going to be going over Terraform and uh, folder structure best practices. So when you're working within Terraform, uh, whether it be with your company, um, side projects, um, or, you know, just learning, a lot of questions people ask is, you know, what are, you know, how should I have my folder structure um, laid out, like for projects or like if you're, or if maybe you're with a big company and you got a lot of developers or infrastructure engineers developing various things um, within Terraform, but you kind of try to, you, you know, you want to kind of figure out like, hey, how should we, you know, structure um, our, um, you know, directories and folders and files and things like that. So I'm going to be going over like a simple uh, directory structure that can kind of help, you know, uh, make sense no matter what. Uh, cloud provider you're using, what kind of projects you're doing, it should kind of all flow together. So um, I work with um, Azure a lot. So, you know, in my sense, I like to kind of, um, you know, you might see a lot of these over here on the side um, as far as like folder structures with uh, some of the different repos I might have pulled down from Terraform's website. But I want to start fresh and kind of just show you a way that can kind of make sense for a lot of people. If you're say, let's say using Azure, for example. So I'm going to add a new folder. No, actually not in there. Let me add a folder to workspace here. Inside my Git repo, I'm going to create a folder called just, um, TF, all right, so AZTF, so Azure Terraform, create. So I'm gonna use that as my main directory structure. I'm gonna add that in there. So this is my, say, this is where all my Terraform will sit. Now, one way you can kind of do this is, uh, let's think of Azure as in different, you have different subscriptions, right? So you want to kind of limit your blast radius in terms of like when you're developing code, you don't want everything that you're building within the same state file. Because as your state file grows, you have more dependencies, you have more room for error, the state file can take longer and longer to run because it has to evaluate more resources. So the thing I like to do is um, from say like a Azure standpoint, we can separate things starting out by subscriptions. So if we look in, um, pull it up here again. Put so many tabs up, oh, here we go. So if we look in Azure, we can see there's a couple of different subscriptions. Now, if you're in a bigger company, you might have something called production or development, sandbox, it could be um, your subscriptions could be by department um, or if you're following like say the cloud adoption framework, it could be by connectivity, platform, identity, stuff like that. But basically, it's just a way to kind of segment out, uh, you know, resources amongst different organizational units. So let's say we had a subscription called... Um, Let's make a new folder. We're going to call this um, production, AZ production. And then I'm going to have a new folder called AZ development. And again, this isn't like any particular order or best practice that you would have to follow. It's just a way to kind of um, see how things can kind of mature and develop as you start to use Terraform a lot more. So we'll have another one called AZ, let's say Sandbox. So these are three different subscriptions. Now within these subscriptions, you could still technically have, let's say, um, well, you know, because these could, you know, these names here could be like, let's say HR, IT, accounting or whatever. And then within those, you could have like say a prod, development, um, you know, sandbox environment. Um, you know, as far as the connectivity between them, 
that's just going to all depend on what's needed. But we're just going to be focusing on the infrastructure side. So I'm now going to create, now before I create anything, I want to kind of think of these as silos. So now let's say within my production environment, you have certain projects, then you have one-off resources um, that would de that would need develop. So w I would think as a project as something that requires a lot of resources all together. And let's say this project is um, uh, building out, let's say a virtual network, right? So we're gonna create a new folder called you know, 172.20.0.0 slash, you know, dot or dash VNet. So that's one project. Then we can create a new folder and we can call this, um, let's say, instead of a VNet, we could be creating some type of application. So let's say web front and firewall. So this could be like a, uh, a firewall that also creates uh, different um, web servers, application servers, databases, everything would basically go within this main project. So that way, the life cycle of the project can be maintained within this folder and same thing as far as with the virtual network here. So that way you don't have just one folder that encompasses all the Terraforms that would be um, you know, a part of this subscription. So you can kind of separate them out. They have their separate TF state files and everything like that. So now what we, we would probably get into is inside your subscription or whatever service you're using, you might have, you might run into the, the um, and I'm sticking with Azure because a lot of people who are using Terraform are probably using one of the cloud providers, Azure, Google, um, or AWS. And you're gonna get times where you're gonna need to create one-off resources. And those one-off resources could be like someone saying, hey, I need a storage account. Or, hey, I need a key vault or I need a, you know, just a single VM or a resource group, you know, with nothing in it yet because I'm gonna deploy my own resources. But, you know, instead of actually just creating a folder for every single one, what you could do is, let's say we create a new folder called TF resources. And these are just gonna be a bunch of resources that's getting created. But within that folder, I would create separate folders for those different types of resources. So it could be resource groups. Then another one would be storage accounts. And then you could have another group or another folder for, let's say, key vaults. And within these folders, you would want to create uh, templates that would allow you to um, create the same type of resources within this uh, um, subscription over and over again. And that way, when people do need a one-off resource group or something, they can come in and just add it to the uh, for each loop and it's gonna just continually create, create, create. And then you can easily remove and add and things like that. And then this also helps too because then you can kind of have a, a format in which like say, okay, I need a key vault, but I also need the key vault to be um, in a specific resource group that's not created yet. So you can create your resource group, then you can go in your key vault and then you can create your key vault and place it in the resource group that you created using a, um, your data sources. So you might have like, you know, in here, a main.tf, you have another file called providers.tf and then another file called variables.tf. Now they don't have to be separated, but it's a nice way to separate them. That way um, it's easier to read on what's going on. So your main, uh, you know, in your main.tf to be able to set this up to be able to be used um, to create multiple of those type of resources you would want to 
have everything as uh, variables. So be Azure RM. Oop, resource. Resource group. You're going to call this main. And then you would want to have obviously the you know name equals bar dot rg. We haven't created the resource groups yet. Sometimes that uh autocomplete can kind of get in the way. And then location var dot rg underscore location. So then inside your variables, you would have a variable, and then we would call this a, let's say, resource. Actually, this would be a for each, for each var.rg name would be each dot value dot name each dot value dot location because our our variable name would be called rg and default um, we would have a rg1 Name equals say Kevin RG and then location it equals central US. And then if you want another one, you would create a, another RG two and you would do the same thing. So this would be Kevin RG2 and then location would equals central US. Now you basically created a way for people to continue to add resource groups um, in this variable. And each time that this runs, it's going to create a new resource group because it's going to be looping through the variables that's in this block here. So now you got your different resources um, based off of the folder structure. You got your different projects that can contain, uh, you know, a lot of different resources, but they're maintained by the lifecycle of this project. And then you can also create these, like I said, these one-off resources that might even, you know, reference some of the projects that you're doing. Like let's say you created a resource group prior, but then you need to, you know, call the web front end to be um, to install the res something in a resource group that's already created or something like that. So the formatting kind of varies, you know, depending on your structure. But I kind of like it this way because you can um, utilize this in other formats as well, depending on your uh, subscription you know, cloud provider that you're using, you know, what kind of projects you're doing. It's always good to think of it at a high level. How do we want to set this up to be easily uh, maintained by other users based on uh, how our company operates? So again, this is only one formatted way, but you want to kind of look at it, uh, you know, in this way to make sure that you don't have to then go back in and reevaluate how your folder structure is set up, possibly breaking anything if you're referencing stuff in other folders and stuff like that. So again, if you have any questions, drop me a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back with you. Again, if you have any questions in regards to just, you know, directory structures or how yours is set up or, you know, some better ways of doing it, again, leave me a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back with you with any recommendations I could provide. And again, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time.